So let's say you had a silo mm -hmm. structure, and typically when we when they link these out, let's just say this is a page. Sure. Uh, let's this is this would be like, uh, you know, your website mm -hmm. dot com or whatever you're trying to rank. Got you know, it. that's your money site. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. So on here, the idea when you're siloing is you're trying to get juice pushed down to the most important pages on your site. And there's a lot of training and things that go into this. Um, people can refer to, you know, Tech Foundation One to really get a good grasp and overview of how to pick those money keywords and really properly silo out a site. So gotcha. swallowyourmarkethold.com, shameless plug. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so when you pick out these silos, you're going to end up with links that then. You know, sometimes they're sidebar, sometimes they're navigation. It really depends on the theme that they're going to use for their site. Okay. And this is exactly how it's being represented in that other picture. So, Okay, let's just stick with this one. So what you're drawing here are the links to the silo landing pages. Go ahead and draw everything out. Like, this is really good. This looks gorgeous. So explain what you mean. Those, what are those boxes on that page? So these boxes are typically your top-level silo or category pages. So... And they point to the link, the hyperlink on those points to what? Um, these would go over to a category page. So let's just try to pick a theme here. So sure. let's just let's just say I'm going to try and rank for mm -hmm. uh, dog collar or something. Let's say smart that pens. the web. Uh, oh, smart pens. Mm -hmm. Or so, maybe a sub brand of smart pens or something, like the one you're using right now. <laughs> <laughs> Smartpen.com. Let's okay. say that we're. That's our beautiful. That's our site, and we have mm -hmm. affiliate products associated with selling smart pens. So, okay. there's for categories. I might try to pick like different brands that I might do. So, um, this page would be written about uh, like LifeScribe, for instance. Right, like my, Mike Hayden's pen could be right, or his is like the Neo Two or something. So you could do one for each product. LifeScribe, yeah, is a good one too. And the, let's say another one's written about, you know, your equal, right? Uh, smart pin. So in a URL structure, when you're looking at this, this is going to be looking something like this. Now we're talking about the domain name. So smartpen.com forward slash got it. Lifescribe. That would be your category or your silo landing page forward slash whatever you're going to talk about. Right. Which is like LifeScribe uh, reviews or something. Or just reviews. You wouldn't put it in there twice, right? Right. And so, you know, when we go into this and we're trying to really get a feel for what needs to come down underneath this. Mm -hmm. So these five pages that you're looking at here that you determine for the main pages you want to rank for your main product, mm -hmm. these also will have supporting pages that can really help define what the specific, you know, in this instance, what the specific smart pens would be all about. Okay. So you might talk about features. Sure. The content could be pretty much anything you wanted related to the life scribe. Yeah. And, and we'll go through a process here of like when you're building out your specific links and how you're trying to um, push this out, it's really going to it's really going to sculpt how your keywords are. So that's going to be like your EK DNA. So, mm -hmm. so you're looking for the most thematically relevant and the highest co-occurrence keywords that that would fit with this kind of situation. This would be in a backlink term. Yeah, and just but, for, for everybody listening, that big term, that big fancy word you use, EKDNA, is Sue Bell's definition of what we call empire keywords. It has to do with all the LSI and related terms and money terms for your whole empire as tied to the site and are tied to the silo structures and themes. Yeah. And so... Of course, with the proper LSI words being in the proper location, <laughs> which is pretty yeah, specific. Yeah, and like it, we're kind of just kind of glazing over the siloed part yeah, of a we website, have to. but that's why there's a whole other course well, just huge based amount of, off yeah. of this. So, so <laughs> the interesting thing is there's a huge amount of stuff related to this, and we're not going to cover all this, but this is the top down. There's obviously a reason you're talking about this related to DAS. So um, in a nutshell, 
because I know we're going to go much deeper into DAS. What, why is the silo stuff so important to you personally as it relates to DAS as you've created this method with Sue? Well, when you're going and you're building links to this, mm -hmm. it's going to... So when I build backlinks to this page mm -hmm. um, or any of these pages, because these are all interlinked, right? So if I go to the LifeScribe page... Right. So let's say we're on the LifeScribe page. Let's draw it. Yeah, perfect. I love it okay. when you actually draw it. It's good. There's going to be... Over here, it's going to link back up to your home. Mm -hmm. And then it's you're going to have links that are going to support the yeah. specific um, LifeScribe page that you're on. We could have all kinds of silo subpages related to LifeScribe specifics. Right. And so the way that these interlink... You know, if you're looking from a juice flow perspective, you have your home page, and it's going to link down to your silo pages, mm -hmm. which you know typically, perfect depending it's on the size yeah. of your market. Good. And the size and then, of the market—that's a good point. People don't know the size of the market determines the number of silo pages and pages you should have. That's really good. Okay. And then you'll come down again, and this one would probably have like five other. Supporting, you know, three to five supporting pages for this specific um, top-level silo page but, that you but, picked. By the way, Jimmy, what software does Network Empire have that tells you exactly how many pages and content you should have for that? <laughs> exactly how many pages and content? <laughs> which, which of our is <laughs> that a would pop be the domain web studio? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> pop quiz. <laughs> okay, that's kind of a tricky equation. I'm I've always kind of impressed that we tried to write that into. Any silo builder. Okay. So, and so, gotcha. Because all these link together, so if you're talking about link juice in general, yeah. I know that if I choose to link to this page, it's going to strengthen everything within this silo and the home page as right. well. Right. So, so, you're saying that there's like this buoyancy or this juice flow that goes upwards or it supports it or. That's one of the reasons we, before we called it domain authority stacking, we were going to call it page boosting or something, like when we were thinking about the name. <laughs> so you're kind of saying that, that it flows, it supports it, right? The juice goes, to, it's driving to the homepage, and so the homepage should rank better. Is that, the, for a 10-year-old, is that how you would describe that? Yeah, I would say, like, anywhere you're going to apply this juice, it's going to, in turn, strengthen your homepage, which then, of course, because the homepage links down to these other silos, mm -hmm. Um, all of these are going to get juiced up as well, and gotcha. in turn, the other pages that are there. So th this is a lot better than if you don't do a silo, the link juice is not going to flow so well. So it will go kind of all over the place, really. Right. And dilute everything. Or could so, do, potentially. Which is kind of interesting because um, let's just do a, a new page here so you guys can see. See, kind of like what we're looking at. Sure. So, so let's say you have, on, on a typical site, you know, you're going to see a page like this, mm -hmm. and they're going to call it, um, you know, it's, uh, let's just stick with website.com again. And the typical ones, especially if they're using WordPress, the juice is only really going to roll through the recent blog posts that they did. So um, what happens, you know, this usually will display five to ten recent blog posts. They might interlink into their site with a few, um, a, a few links that are outbound to some other important pages that they're trying to rank. Okay, just make it clear, um, like I'm a 10-year-old, are you talking about pages internal to the site? Like, draw me a picture. I'm not real clear. Those, what you're doing, that red line on the page is going to internal pages? Right. Okay, so the, draw the would, page for me so I don't get confused. Yeah, so Perfect. this might be... Exactly. Um, another keyword. Gotcha. Page. And so they're going out from the top, and they might have what you say, a contextual link back into deeper pages. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when link juice comes down, let's say you're, you're hitting 
uh, the home page this time with backlinks, right? Then what's going to happen is that link juice will flow and it's going to hit this, it's going to hit this, it's going to hit this, and it'll power up these pages, right? So it's going to yep. it, it, you'll you'll get some link juice going to your important pages. Now those are if you don't ever change these links, they're going to be fine. But mm -hmm. in most cases, because they're probably not going to be doing the same thing on these important pages going back to other important pages, or really, it's it's really the interlinking of the site that's making all of that link juice kind of buoyant. So mm -hmm. when they're not doing that, then this juice goes away, and really, they're just going to strengthen this one other page on the site. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like going to do any good. So it's like a cul-de-sac of juice, and one's kind of coagulated, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's like where link juice goes to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay, clear enough. So, and the same thing with the recent blog posts. I mean, recent blog posts are are good. You know, you should keep uh, putting out great content, and the more the content bridge. you put out, yeah. yeah. That widget should be toast. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, but as you add new content, that that link juice just goes away from the home page as as you put in uh you know another blog post that you're doing so it siloing is really about just keeping and structuring and kind of sculpting your link juice on site and trying to keep that that buoyancy of the link juice spread throughout the site evenly so as backlinks get applied that link juice can flow naturally through the site and it's going to trickle down to about every other page that's within this, a properly siloed website. Right. So one of the things that we've always said for the last decade has been, you know, you can rank fewer with up to, you know, 90% fewer inbound links than your competition, uh, 80 to 90. And that, you know, again, throwing out percentages, but that that gives people an idea of obviously having your site flow like this, Jimmy, the way Jimmy's talking about it, is helpful before you set up all this work. I mean, it's it can be quite a bit of work to do a lot of domain authority stacking with a lot of different sites. So you might as well have the site's internal structure happening. But more to the case in point about domain authority stacking, would it be fair to say that by by the time you're done properly researching and siloing your site, either in Tech Foundation 1 or any of the other trainings that we offer, even our basic membership area, that your keyword list that you have, you've, you've, you're probably going to have a pretty good set of words. Of course, they'll, you'll still need to do some more research, but you'll, you should have a pretty good set of words that will prepare you for domain authority stacking. Is that true? or? Yeah, so by the time they get done with their training, um, you know, and Matt and Sue and yourself do a brilliant job of making sure that they're picking um, very highly relevant keywords that also have money, that also have traffic, and it's just set up and ready to go for, you know, your backlinking to begin. Because if, if you're going into this without something that's properly structured, I mean, if, if I can build 80% links on my end, like, you know, that's faster rankings. That's less work. That's just mm -hmm. more efficient. If right. if you're doing this on the cuff and just throwing it out there, I mean, you're it's you're just going to end up doing a lot more work. Okay. So. All right. So back to domain authority stacking. Or Sue has. I could hear Sue breathe for. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, I got one thing that I want to say. So there's aside from the way that the silo structure on site mm -hmm. um, manipulates the page authority mm -hmm. on each of the pages to help you rank easier for your more competitive pages. Mm -hmm. um, because a siloed site has a set of pages that are all thematically related, it makes it easier when you do a DAS cluster because a DAS cluster is also thematically related. Exactly. That's kind of the point I was trying to draw out. Okay. So can you repeat that, Sue? Again, I think that is the one thing when I'm talking to folks that just say it again. <laughs> sure. So, way. so your silo structure is a, a particular silo is a collection of thematically related pages. Mm -hmm. And when you do a DAS cluster, you have a collection of thematically related third-party pages. Right. And when you do that, 
linking structure between the domain authority stack and the website, mm -hmm. you link to multiple pages on the website. So if you have a silo structure set up, you're already teed up to make the best use out of that domain authority stack. Right, you've got your ducks in a row and you're gonna match it with the other incoming ducks, which are the inbound links exactly. from the DASA stack. And again, exactly. that, that's something that's really missed. It's counterintuitive. I've also watched people give us blank stares if they have no training in silo architecture at all. Because they just look, you know, a lot of the times people come into our courses, and by the way, DAS can be used <laughs> without siloing. Uh, can it, actually? We might as well address that there. Can we? Can people use DAS, Jimmy, because a lot of people in our DAS course have not done siloing. Can they use it effect at all? Yeah, they can. Um, it's it's not that it doesn't work, it just works better when you yeah. have a siloed site. Okay, cool. Just wanted to clarify that point. Okay, cool. So where do we go from here in explaining to me like I'm maybe a 10 or 12 year old how I can connect all this to DAS? Like how does DAS work? Like in terms of one of the things that I'm, let me just talk to you about, let, let me pretend that I'm really confused about a couple of things, okay? And yeah, maybe you can help me. I had one student come to me and say, um, this is no different than tiered linking. Okay, that's something that Mike Hayden and I were talking about. This is because uh, he was talking to somebody who was confused about tiered linking. Well, so the yeah, that is an interesting, an interesting point. So we've we've definitely come across that question a few times, I yeah. think. So and you tiered great, linking. Uh -huh. You so gave a great answer too. You'll have your money site. Whoops. Mommy Bad spelling. Site. <laughs> can you <laughs> can you erase on this uh, tool? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. And just. Uh, Oh yeah, you can. But it doesn't erase it on your paper. Oh, that's that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so we'll draw that on there. Okay, so money site, and this is this is an example of uh, your tiered linking. Mm -hmm. So. And what not to do, by the way, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, tiered linking still can be effective, but it's not the same as DAS. Okay, that's the main and distinction I'll, you want to make. Yeah, I'll kind of show you what the difference is. So. Okay. This is an example of tiered linking. So you'll have the money site, and then your tiered one. So your tier one backlinks are just the first jump away from your money site, right? So these would be different web pages in the World Wide Web that then are going to do a hyperlink or link to your directly to your money site. Money site. Boom. Right? Hashtag. Ah. So. These are what we consider tier one, right? And then typically, what tiering is is they just keep building to these. So you're going to end up doing more on your tier two. So, but you know, <laughs> for most people out there, they this is a very conservative example of how they might do their tiered link building. You mean the person I was talking to who did like 1.2 million links on his tier two? Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's completely unnecessary. Yeah. Um, especially in today's algorithm, you want to try to rank with as few links as possible. Gotcha. Wow, that's so, a huge point. So, in your tier three, you know, they're just going to come in and they're going to do even more to their, you know, so on and so forth. And, three, they're, and tiered linking implies that three only points to two, right? Right. So, okay. And then that's like a snowman, pretty much. Yeah, and so this is typically what how tiered linking works. Now, the problem with that is the idea of DAS is to try and stick as close to your money site as you can with a seed set mm -hmm. or a seed site. So a seed site is what we consider to be a site that's very trusted in Google. These typically involve... Um, you know, like a, a person manually reviewing mm -hmm. the sites. They typically don't make money, although there's a lot of sites that do. Like Wikipedia um, is a great example. Yeah, Wikipedia is a great example. Of, uh, uh, that would be like your seed set. So it's like the originator of how the trust is going to flow. Sure. Um, now, the further away that you get from that, the more spammier that site becomes or the less trust it's going to get. So when you're looking at it from that standpoint, 
how we try to sculpt our DAS is try to not go any further away than four jumps from the money site. Because about you, the time... Can you please draw a diagram of everything you just said? Because, you know, what's going on in your head is not necessarily what's... I think it's a brilliant point. Can you draw a diagram of seed sets? And... Yeah, so so let's, let's say you have... So let's say this is Wikipedia. Yeah, perfect. Huge authority S site. Number one for everything. A lot of things. So, yeah... Yeah, I mean, if if you can get links from there, you're you're definitely boosting. Um, you're getting kudos from Google for your for your site, and you're going to see a big jump in your rankings. Right. So, the way this works is one jump. So this is considered a jump. You know, it's just mm -hmm. one tier. Right. Yep. So when you're discussing jumps, you're really discussing tiers in the tiered mythology, or tiered yeah. rhetoric. Okay, cool. That's that. I think that's going to be really helpful for some of our students. So when you're jumping from this, so so let's say our money site is all the way over here, okay? And we do Wikipedia links to some other site, you know. Mm -hmm. Could be. And a, then, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say well, where like that a, would even be. But <laughs> well, you could go from Wikipedia to like, uh, like um, Mendeley. Is I actually have that happening to, from to Mendeley.com, which is you can put links to. Let's put an M there, and then. And Mend then this is gonna, and then your Mendeley might be referencing um, a cooking site or something. Exactly. So you reference a, a recipe that helps lose weight, whatever it goes. So would, would the cooking site be low or high domain, or it doesn't matter? You're just trying to show us the the seed set, right? Yeah, just trying to show the seed set okay. and kind of how it flows. Okay. So from the cooking side, that might actually go to another site. And maybe, let's just say this is a blogging site yeah, that they picked blogger, it up from. Some low-end blogger subdomain or something. And then this one would link to your money site at that point. So that's like one, two, three, four jumps. Yeah, so at this point, there's a big difference between the amount of trust that we're pulling in from this one mm -hmm. versus a seed set going directly to it. Right. Wow, so that's huge. When you look at that, your goal is to try and stay as close as you can to the the biggest seed sets that you can actually build links to. Now, when you say the biggest, what you're really saying is the highest domain authority. Right, because typically... DA. Yeah, typically the higher the DA is, the more trusted they typically are because, you know, they have a lot of content on them. There's a lot of traffic going to them. They've been established. You're not usually going to find a, a high DA site that's legit that hasn't been around for at least a Long few years. Time. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So this is interesting how this relates to... So let's refer this... Go with what you were saying on why tiered... The problem with tiered model... With, in relationship to this, it pretty much is self-explanatory, but you're getting too far away, you're making too many jumps, and you're going to a whole lot of work with things that, like a lot of the times on that old, on those old models, all the way back from Revenge of the Mini Net and all those things, every all the original, you know, tiered linking processes, they usually have, like, the third layer has, like, no authority, and it's just kind of, right? Is that what you're saying here? Or? Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of interesting when you look at um, the way the trust flows versus how... So everybody's used to PR. Like PR, that's like the power, right? That's uh, that's the power of a site. So Google has is, is made a substantial shift probably about two years ago mm -hmm. that it's really wanting to focus more on the trust of a site versus the PR or the power of a site. Because PR is manipulated very heavily by using, you know, none other than our tiered... Oh, interesting. So it, link be, methods. so it would be easier to manipulate PageRank, which is not really what you... I have this video of this guy named Jimmy Kelly saying uh, PageRank is a distraction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, so it would be way easier to manipulate PageRank with tiered linking than it would be to um, to manipulate trust domain authority and even harder to, to manipulate, manipulate trust flow. Right. So, and it's kind of interesting. You can make a... There's a real interesting distinction that you can make here. So... Okay. Let's refer to PR for a moment and okay. back in the day. Okay. Okay. So I have a PR site. It's got pretty good. Let's say it's like a four PR. Okay. A, a page rank four for people that don't know what 
PR stands for means patron. patron. But that's good, yeah. I'll add that to the glossary, actually. It's good to know. And mostly, you know, this is primarily what Google's used to really tell people, you know, how weighted is this page? Like, right. how important is it? And right. more times than not, you know, back in the day, this this wasn't a bad metric because Google's hopes, I think, were more people linking to it should mean more traffic should mean it's more important. Yeah. So they just count as votes. Yeah. So let's say that we got a link from this PR for, and this went out to our money site, right? So right. let's just say it goes out to our money site, wherever that might be. Okay. okay, now let's say we had a bunch of other people coming back behind us because they saw, oh, man, this guy got a great link from a PR4 site. Let's all go there and get links to our sites. Which typically happens. Yeah. So this is going to go Unless out. Unless you own the site and it's your golden frame. It's going to be somebody else's money site. Yeah. It's going to go out and be somebody else's money site, so on and so forth. Okay. So. Yeah. How much PR are we really drawing from the PR4 once you have all these people linking out? You know, you might <laughs> it's gonna be very minimal, right? You're gonna that, get like a like point two PR going to your site. Right. It's kinda like diluting the PR some. So yeah, so it's kinda interesting how that works. Now, on the flip side, when we're trying to work with a seed set, it's a it's a little bit more interesting. So how did PR come about? You know, you're looking here at the amount of links and the juice that these links had before. Now, when you're looking at it from a DA or a trust standpoint, um, it works quite the opposite. So you have a site here, and if I can have a trusted seed set come into this and link over to my page, mm -hmm. The, the trust is going to stay relatively high because um, a, a back, so let's say you have one backlink mm -hmm. and it links over to here. You're going to keep most of that trust. Now, the more backlinks that you have coming in, if you're not sculpting it correctly, it's going to drop the trust of your link. So w with... Um, Okay, I'm starting to lose you a little bit. This page that you're writing on here, what is this? Is this the page you're targeting for rankings? Yeah, so this would be okay. this would be the trust of our money site, let's say. Mm -hmm. And these are these are high DA sites. Oh, that's what I was maybe. Missing. They okay. might not be high DA sites. Ver let's say we varying DAs, right? Yeah. Varying DAs. Let's just say like, oh, we went out and got some comments right. and it could be we anything. went out and got could some yeah, I mean, they can even be... ML, ML yeah, so it's it's not the same. So what we're trying to bring in is the trust and the DA from this specific uh, authority site. Right, it's a very but different the, strategy, isn't it? Yeah, so the more of these that you have, typically, especially if you're not picking the right stuff, you're going to end up with your your trust is going to go down with the more of these coming in. Right, so, so you can dilute your trust in the same way you can dilute page rank, but it's a completely different thought process, completely different math, really. Yeah, because if you think about this, now think about what happens in this scenario. The more links that you build on a tiered basis, what's happening to your trust with the more links that you build? You're basically destroying the trust of these other pages as they wow. go through the tiers. <laughs> so you're actually literally diluting everything. It's, it's dilution all the way down. Yeah, and this is this is why if you can implement a, a domain authority stack correctly, for someone doing tiering versus what you might be doing with DAS, you might only need three links versus however many links they built out in a tier. Right, so it's kind of like Kung Fu Panda, you know, pull my thumb. The more powerful the link, I mean, theoretically, you know, there's really only one link you need as long as it's got absolute trust. yeah. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pulling your leg. It's late. I'm trying to, to joke. <laughs> so, you know, and that's the thing. When you're not sculpting this, like a comment link probably was low quality. A form link was yeah, probably low quality. So you by, know, by sculpting, which pulls us back to domain authority, which is really kind of a way to do all this. It's like a, this is really what you're trying to show people. It's what we're trying to show them. 
He's like, you know, get rid of the stuff that is not trustworthy and don't think, I can see now why you're saying like the tiered mindset, like SE Nuke and a lot of the fiber gigs and everything or the, you know, we'll get into link wheels. Hopefully at some point I'd like you to do a similar drawing to discuss, you know, the link wheel mythology, which a lot of people are stuck in as well. Not that it's bad all the time, but you know, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that you really should pick and choose and not think like a, you know, more is better and really have fewer jumps to the site and what you're is what you're doing with domain authority stacking really sculpting a way to have the fewest possible jumps with the highest possible trust right so let's let's go let's go back to so we're going to go draw the let's just do a quick sketch on what this would look like would going great. Mike, to did the you, money did side. i hear you start to chime in yeah, sorry. No, I was just saying what you just said then. Uh, Russ was brilliant. I think it was going to help a lot of people understand. Yeah, can, did you catch that, Jimmy? Go back, because I know you're going to draw this. Actually, don't even go back. Start again. What I was saying, which I extracted from Jimmy's brain, you know, because sometimes mm -hmm. I, I need to do that, is that really it's the it's, it's sculpting thematically. Domain authority is like sculpting thematically and getting as much trust as you can with the fewest possible links. Right. Yeah, and you could really... You know, because you have control over the properties typically that you're building, I mean, you can handle your unique content, you can handle the thematic relevance, Understood. you can handle yeah. everything from beginning to end typically. Yep. Yeah. This, this should be a light bulb moment for everybody because I think that's, Mike, would you believe, would you agree that that's kind of roadblock? I mean, that's not necessarily what people are extracting when they first study domain authority stacking. It takes a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. I, I think it, that's one of the big issues that a lot moments. of people face. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, and and also like, getting it so that they don't spam. Yeah. And, and it's really amazing how addictive the whole spam thing is. I, I am finding it, Jimmy, I don't know if you've noticed this, but people who have no training at all, who are, actually, you told me this today. <laughs> it was you. You were, you said that, I hope I can, I can snip this out if you don't want people to know this, but you were telling me that the reason you don't hire, like on your team, in your department, uh, experienced SEOs to work for you and with you is because they already think they know and they're kind of coming from that old school of more is better and pay drink and they pretty much ruin most of the stacks that they do because they don't listen to what you're saying <laughs> because they continue to stay they continue to have that mindset of you know choosing up in the old school instead of trying. yeah yeah exactly they they think because of the way that seos have been you know we've just kind of you know when pr was the heyday and that was the primary focus before yeah. algorithms started to shift. Yeah. Um, you know, y you could just manipulate it just by doing tiered link building. So everybody, even to this day, like I think most people out there are still focusing on, oh, we got, they got to be tiers. We got to do quantitative links. We got to, you know, get as much as we can because that's going to push money. That's completely the opposite, which I think is kind of brilliant on Google's part because right. they're <laughs> really basically is. shifting the algorithm to do opposite of what every SEO has done previous. I mean, that's crazy. They're actually saying, yeah, it really is. Okay. Good, good. This is um, this is like a light bulb moment in a box now. We kind of have it. That's what I was looking for. Cool. So what, what are you going to show us now on, on this one? So now what I wanted to, to go over is like, so we talked about the tiered um, link building for a moment. So now let's talk about how DAS is different. Okay. Um, so, which we we kind of explain between what happens with trust and quantity of links versus you know how Quality PR yep. basically worked before. Right. Which is dilution from a hub or a door. We used to call them Dory pages, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so when you look at this. Um, so let's say that I these are our siloed pages on our money site. And this is going back to that first drawing that we kind of were showing on that blank template thing. Right. Okay, so so this was um can't remember. So this was like our smart pen homepage. Mm -hmm. And then these are our top level silos. Where's the homepage? Are you are you doing the homepage side by side? I'm oh, Okay. Yeah, this market. Home page. Remember, I'm a 12-year-old. I'm easily confused. <laughs> silo, silo, silo. Okay. Gotcha. So my home page okay. is on the right. I got it. So when you have this in, this situation, when we go back through and we start connecting the dots with our DAS clusters, we're trying to put 
the highest trust flow type links that we can mm -hmm. to these different pages, right? So they're basically going to link something like this. We obviously go over this in more detail. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we do is we try to also utilize the domain authority to go sideways. So let's say okay. let's say you had like a you know, let's say it's like a 20 DA or something. Okay, like it's going to pass on some amount of DA over here. You might end up with a 5 DA just from this link, right? Wow. So a 5 DA. And this is theoretical. I mean, it depends on the properties and everything, but I'm just trying to give people kind of a rundown. Yeah, I mean, we'll get more now, specific later on in the training, and that's... that's now, fun. this property of the DA might be like a 30 DA. So now, let's say it passes a 5 again, but then you're also going to pick up maybe 3 or 2 from there. So then you might get an 8 DA on this property. So mm -hmm. the DA kind of snowballs as you build it up through... You're going to end up with with quite a punch because these are basically going to push that link juice flow along with it. Okay. Now, the other thing is, so this might look like tiering at first, but now when you're going back to the individual silo pages, this is only one jump, right? Mm -hmm. So we're maximizing the, the trust flow both light, ways. Light bulb, I got it. I may have seen this even better than I did in your other diagrams. I got it. Okay. And that's that's really the purpose of Touché. yeah I got it of how it works. This so. is very cool. Okay, I've had a second light bulb moment on a period of five minutes. Okay, so uh, it's interesting that of course there's more questions that it will be in the advanced training. I'm sure that other students will be asking the same thing if they've just been exposed to this. There's things like obviously keyword relevance and uh, stuff that Sue cracks her whip on, which is thematic relevance. How does all that stuff interplay? Like. Let me just ask you this, Sue. I don't know if Sue's still here, but um, yeah. Okay, she is. I don't know if you're still here or not, Sue, because I, I know you got a lot of different programming and stuff we're doing. Uh, but my question, at the heart of all of this, domain authority, in general, and trust flow, how important is thematic relevance in keywords? Like, if you were, I mean, obviously you don't rank for a keyword if it's not on the page, right? Like Google bombing and all that. So I guess what I'm trying to ask you guys, maybe I don't even know the right question, is I'm already seeing the power of domain authority stacking and keywords and thematic relevance are only vaguely involved here. Like obviously you got silos. So Jimmy's saying, okay, each one of these Weebly pages or or whatever they are should be thematically relevant, right? Yep. How does thematic relevance and keyword relevance play into trust okay, flow so and domain authority? Here's the thing. If you <laughs> have a high domain authority page or a page authority page mm -hmm. that's about cats right and you link it to a page about chocolate right it's exactly. gonna pass the power mm -hmm. or the power but it's it's not gonna pass any thematic relevance mm -hmm. so in other words it's gonna say hey this this over here it's an important site but you know it's not really about what I'm about so you know and how does it's Google like tangentially Google... important so, to what it is that I'm talking about? Right, so gotcha. when you line both of the ducks up, when it's thematically relevant and powerful, mm -hmm. it's a home run. Okay, and home run in terms of what? Define home run for me very specifically in terms of ranking. In terms of ranking, it'll shoot you right uh -huh. up to the top. And when it's just power and it's not themed, mm -hmm. then <laughs> it's. Google reweights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that right, Jimmy? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So it, that would explain a lot of the things that I've been seeing when we've been doing our labs, you know, and workshops, like at your place, Sue. Like some of those things we saw, like on, you know, that what was that that jewelry stuff? You know, where you see something is a super powerful site, and there's almost no content, and then they just have a single thematic related term pointing to it, or so there's a lot of things I can see now where thematic relevance is key in certain rankings. 
It is key. Like, if you want to get, if your goal is to get to the top with as few links as possible, mm -hmm. you want those links, not just the links that point to your site, but the next level back, you want them to be thematically relevant. So, Sue, we were pretty accurate and pretty futuristic when we called our company ThemeZoom.com? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Um, I'm just being slightly, you know, facetious since it's three in the morning. Um, okay, wow. Okay, what, Mike Hayden? Yep. Are you still here? Uh, can you I think of, I'm, I have so many light bulb moments flooding in for me, quite honestly, that do you have any connections of things that we could, because there's several things we've now discovered. Okay, if I put myself in beginner's mind, I've discovered mm -hmm. that uh, page rank is a distraction because the math is quite different. And yeah, there's some relatedness, but you don't want to think in terms of strategy. I understand the difference between domain authority and trust, and I even understand how thematic relevance is is connected what other kind of challenges have you seen with students uh you know these either old misnomers that we need to put by the wayside um challenges that you see common errors is there anything that you would choose to to toss in or have we start have we covered most of them well one thing that i would throw in particularly with this diagram sitting right here it, mm -hmm. it looks like a link wheel it looks like a <laughs> domain level it does. link wheel and, that, and that's why i wanted to but... address the link wheel issue with jimmy and, and explain the difference Exactly. Yeah. So I was just going to say, Jimmy, if you can explain to us how it's quite different from a, a link wheel. Or, or is it? Or is it like all link wheels are not created equal? It's 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 not it's not the size of the wheel. It's how you link it or something. I don't know. Like, is, <laughs> is, is, is it... well, so Google Google identifies patterns on stuff, right? So right. they're they're seeing what's going on with with your backlinks. You know, if you can throw and you know, as we go further into the rabbit hole with some of this, you know, we'll explain why we do some of the other layers in here that we do. But if you're looking at this from just a purely tier one standpoint, mm -hmm. um, let's say you, you have your money site right here. That's, right. Okay. So mm -hmm. a typical link wheel is going to look like this. So you're going to have, and I'm sure people have seen plenty of this around the web. Fiber. They're going to link there, Five it's going to link there, and they're going to link there, and right. there, and there, and there, and then they're all going to go straight to the money site. Mm -hmm. So, and this used, you know, this method used to work really good mm -hmm. at one point, but right. Google recognizes that and says, hey, you can't do that. That's, they're all interlinked, they're all going to the same target. Mm hmm now, when you're looking at it from a DAS standpoint, what what we end up with on the money site is a cluster of, you know, depending on how many pages you put into your silo and and where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can imagine that this is like your home page and then you got silo pages around here. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you, you can have the supporting pages, but I'm not going to go into that much depth. Mm -hmm. So just for concept purposes... If if you were to go in here, DAS would only really do something like this. And it goes at four most, right? Because after four, you you're really not getting any juice. Yeah. You're not really getting any benefit from it. So they follow the initial part of a link wheel, but then when you come in, these are not hitting the same page as you're going into the into the money site they're all going to hit different pages yeah and they're, and not, they're not interconnecting it's not round robin all the way right so there's there it's kind of a combination between a link wheel and a tiered <laughs> it like is a tiered, it is a tiered <laughs> link it's a tiered wheel <laughs> it's a <laughs> weird okay I link gotcha. wheel cradle and, <laughs> i don't think i'd really want to do this without uh siloing actually what from what i know from years and them thematic relevance actually and that's so, why well, so adamant about it. And what happens on the link juice, what's interesting about the link juice, so when you're, so when this is properly siloed out, right? you know, your link juice kind of flows like this. Home page is going to link to everything. These all link to the home page, right? Right. These then also link to each other. So... 
you know, what did we say about trust and the amount of links that you're putting in? So a traditional one that somebody be trying to rank would be the homepage. All of these, you know, all of the ones you have down here would typically be going to here. Yep. And the more links you build, typically, if you're not paying attention to uh, the trust and DA of these properties, mm -hmm. the more it's going to drop that trust. And that's that's one of the primary factors to be able to rank in Google today. Mm -hmm. So what happens by doing this, because we're spreading out the links, right, we're not really losing any of the link juice because of the way the silo works. And as you can see, you know, this even, it, I mean, these arrows even get more crazy, right? <laughs> they all link to each other. So, it, you know, buoyant link juice, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, even though we're spreading these link these links out, it max again, it maximizes the trust because it's one link in. But then on site, Google can determine what it wants to do. Um, with how those pages rank because you're not losing any of those four links. It's just powering up the whole site all at once as opposed to trying to target just your specific home page. Right. Yeah, that's pretty trippy and I've never seen it actually quite thought about like that. I mean, I understand what you're saying. I've just never seen it drawn out like that and that does give me another light bulb moment. Okay, you're four for four. <laughs> so, can I throw another light bulb in here? Please, yeah, give me a fifth. I'm just going to lose right, my mind. So so the cool thing about a silo structure is that not every silo has to be about the same topic, right? Uh -huh. So let's say in this example so that can you define you've got... topic? What do you mean by topic? Like like just a subject or that is or isn't, doesn't even have to be related to like a core theme or, or it is. Right. Uh, okay. Right. So like, let's say that, uh, that you're doing a site on health and wellness. Right. Right. So the whole thing can be about health and wellness, but you can have radically different silos. Right. You, you might have a silo about, um, vitamins you might have a silo about equipment you might have a silo about diseases mm -hmm. okay so within each one of those silos you've got pages that are more related to each other so if i had something like health and wellness with all those radically different silos instead of each one of these inbound links going to a silo landing page mm -hmm. i would pick one silo and it would go deep instead of across so it would go, your links would go to the silo landing page and then the supporting articles underneath that silo so that, so that your content within your stack can all be about vitamins and it'll all go to vitamin pages within your website, within your money site. I, I would like to get a little bit more clear on this. You almost nailed it. Um, are you telling me that you don't point to the silo landing page? You just, it's like, is that the idea of buoyant page I, rank except with trust I, or? I'm not addressing the, the silo, the buoyant page rank concept right at the moment. Okay. What I'm saying is on some people's sites, mm -hmm. each silo is a radically different theme. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you've, got, if you've got equipment and vitamins and diseases, you're not going to want to have in your DAS stack, you're not going to cover all those radically different topics. Uh -huh. You're going to pick one of those like vitamins. Could you have a stack for each topic? Would that be the better? You would to have, do it? exactly. You would have oh. a stack for each topic. Wow, and that's... so then. Mm -hmm. Then ahead. as you go across and link, instead of linking to silo page one, silo page two, and silo page three, yeah, you would link one. to silo page one, supporting article one, supporting article two, and supporting article three. Yeah, it's almost like you turn the whole thing on its side. Exactly. Wow, that's a trip. Now, here's a question. This may or may not be true. I think you answered this to me before, and you were like, uh, I'll talk to you later about it. You don't quite get it. Um, I think... <laughs> Well, seriously, I remember this because it was really late, like four in the morning. We just done two launches consecutively. Okay. Um, when you does the thing, the model that Jimmy just is Jimmy drawing, or are you guys somehow collaborating? It's like you're one mind. You're freaking me out here. We're one it's mind. Mind melding. <laughs> <laughs> but that does give me a great idea. Since we all have these pens, we could probably collaborate on one sheet. Um, Sue, that model that he just pointed to, would that, generally speaking, be a site that has a much higher total search market value keyword and theme, in other words, a much larger site or target keyword, or does it not matter? It has to do with how unthematically relevant the terms are. Is it size, it thematic has... relevancy, or both? It's thematic relevancy. No kidding. So if I have a tiny site with really like long tail keywords that I'm targeting, and they're You gotta have at least five supporting pages for any theme, which we talk about when we, you build a silo site. Got that. And so long as you have five pages, 
you've got it, you've established the theme on site. And so then you can use your DAS stack to establish the theme off site and you relate the off site to the on site and Bob's your uncle. Okay, that, I know, but that's not what I asked. Okay. I'm asking, listen again, okay. If the vertical pages that you're talking about here, in other words, the idea that they're completely, that the themes are not thematically related to the core seed theme. Right. That they're like in machines versus health and wellness, right? Or office mm -hmm. supplies versus what you're telling me is that it's not the size of the site, although generally sites that are much bigger will have the most unrelated themes. But in the event that they don't, you're saying it's not the size of the site or the total search market value or the competitiveness of the keyword that, the ter that determines whether or not I should have multiple DAS stacks to silos. You're telling me it's the thematic relevance only? So you got to look at two different things. You've got two different things going on. One is... Um, the amount of trust flow that you've got, the amount of push that you're pushing to that silo. And that depends on how competitive those terms are. So mm -hmm. let's say that you've got two really competitive themes mm -hmm. and you've only got five pages on the site for each one of those. Right. That's what I'm going to need. You're going to need a lot more off page inbound links. You're going to need a lot more push, a lot more power coming in from outside your site because you haven't given the power on site. Right. But it's, what I'm saying is that I'm talking about unique DAS stacks. If it's a, right, you're going to, you're going to need more DAS stacks basically because they can only be four levels deep. So you, the more competitive the market, if you don't have enough pages on site, you're going to need more DAS stacks. So you would do a DAS stack for each silo is what I'm saying. If it, because or, the themes unrelated. Or you're going to have to get a more powerful DAS stack. Hmm. Okay. Very yeah, and cool. the the cool thing with it's, that's kind of heavy. <laughs> it's cool. It's not because the topics are unrelated, but it's because the topics are not are competitive, and you don't have a lot of on-site supporting content. That's what I was trying to find out. Okay, so it has nothing to do with co-occurrence of the topically the top-level side landing pages being not related to to each other. It's not that old school thought. It's really about the fact that they're just simply more competitive and they don't have the well, juice or the number of pages on site. If it's competitive and you have multiple silos that are about that theme, mm -hmm. then you're doing more to establish that theme on site. Right. And I'm talking about the instance where the silos are very, very unrelated. And yet the site's right. not very big. They're like five pages each. Yeah. And you're, and you're saying gonna have still to get... do multiple DASs for each silo. You're going to have to get the power from somewhere. Gotcha. But it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm, it's not the thematic relevance that's causing me to do multiple DAS stacks to each silo. It's the fact that there's not enough pages on site. In fact, don't, what would happen in Domain Web Studio, any silo builder, the off software that we wrote, for those of you listening, is it would tell me probably I need like 10 pages, right? It would or, tell you, yeah, it would tell you how much on-page content you need, and it would give you an idea of how many inbound, thematically relevant inbound links you would need. Right, just a sidestep. I know this is a, might be a branch too far, Sue, but is there a way to translate those any silo builder numbers into a DAS stack? <laughs> like, yeah. You, really? So yeah. could you consider it a similar, you could well, use those numbers? You've You've got the number of inbound links you need there. You can look at the number of inbound links you're getting off at this particular DAS stack is four. Holy crap. Okay, another light bulb moment. Got it. Good. Um, <laughs> boom. Okay, there's five for five. Next. <laughs> that is very cool. Uh, and for those of you listening, this might seem a little complex, but with a little bit, this is some more advanced conversation. You can pat yourself on the back because it doesn't get much more complex than where we are right now. <laughs> so if you're even sort of following you know, then you're becoming an advanced, super advanced uh, DAS stacker. <laughs> okay, cool. Can I just clarify something? Um, yeah, I might jump about in. The, the, so we've got down that um, bottom right um, stack uh, example. Uh, can I just clarify that it, we're not talking about just having four properties um, that you know there can be multiple properties in there. Each property could link to one or more different ones. Sometimes they don't link to the page. Am I on the right track with that? Correct. Yeah, we. You know, this just represents like what the tier one links would look like. But yeah, we definitely want to <laughs> give dead ends and 
so it doesn't look like everything's just going to one place. That there's, way, there's one link on each page doing exactly what you're, you've drawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you know, we, basic model. we we definitely oh. would, <clears throat> you know, and as as we go through the course, they're going to learn how to do. Yeah, there's so these... much in the course, you guys. For those of you listening who've just pulled, I mean, this is a great uh, introduction video what we're making now guys i think don't you think so um but this is uh obviously in the training you get specific we're coming out with a lot of step by steps on this topic this is what you call a concept map and kind of a flow map here and you know definitely as you build these out i mean you, you know all the web's going to connect in one way or another and they still utilize links for votes per se mm -hmm. but the goal isn't to make it look like a glowing beacon of spam in google right. <laughs> <laughs> you know if you can make it look like it's natural there's quality stuff going in there's there's activity going on on these links there's people talking about it um you know it's not just about the link juice all the time you you also get into, you know, making that backlink something that's quality. People that they might share it or they might tweet about it or they might put that post up on their Facebook wall or, yeah, you know, there's other things that can happen yeah. other than just looking at the link juice. Yeah, and we teach a lot of that stuff in our various other trainings as well. So, you know, all that stuff gets combined. In fact, uh, on this list that we're providing domain authority stacking student members, uh, one of the things that we have a list of do's and don'ts. One of the do's is what Jimmy was just saying. We have a concept called engagement rank and then on-site engagement. You definitely want to, you know, we constantly are suggesting that people add all those features, those like buttons, those share buttons, those, there's all kinds of engagement type things. And, you know, in our uh, certification level three, we talk about video engagement. And I'm getting people sharing bizarre videos on sites all the time <laughs> that are going viral. You know, you never know when you're going to hit one. It's kind of like hitting the lottery and it'll get us sent to like a thousand people or or you just hit just the right keyword. And, and if you have engagement on the site, it gets shared. And, and you know, so you still get all the advantages of that. It's not like you throw out everything <laughs> that relevant content is about. It's just that you it all works together synergistically, right, Jimmy? Yeah, that's correct. You know, okay. we want... It, basically what happens on the web naturally, um, this, you know, that's what we want to try and emulate. Okay. All right, cool. Well, we've covered a lot. We've been on for about an hour. Um, I'm personally feeling like a lot has been covered. We did what Mike and I were wanting to cover, which is really exposed, and you've done it really, really well. Jimmy, I, I really like your new tools here, this new drawing kit. Um, and it's a little bit different than the you know, the hard uh, map that you provided before, which are also great for different purposes. Uh, we've exposed the tiered issues that I know Mike and I have heard people talk about and think it's the same. We now know why it's not the same. We understand the difference between page rank, uh, dilution <laughs> from those from that model and trust flow and power, domain authority. Uh, we know the difference between uh, we know why siloing is super important thematically, as Sue is constantly expressing, and how we didn't get too much into keywords and distribution of those today, but I think that that should be another module, because I think it's uh, advanced enough that we would really want to, you know, stop at the, start at the top again, <laughs> kind of clean our palettes and go through that. We also talked about link wheels, which was very educational to me where everything is connected, everything is overly connected <laughs> and leaves an obvious pattern. Uh, so to me, I'm, and we also talked about thematic relevance, silos and numbers of pages and how to focus domain authority stacks to individual silos that are thematically related to support those themes. So I've had several light bulb moments today and I know that our students, you know, are gonna have those as well. Uh, do you have anything you guys wanna add to this? And we've covered everything I was hoping for. Okay. I think this is good for this. And I, I would like to continue to do these types of things. And uh, Sue, are you good with this? Can I put this in the yep. can? All right. Yep, I think so. All right. This has been uh, Jimmy Kelly, Sue Bell, Mike Hayden, and Russell Wright uh, for Domain Authority Stacking, another Domain Authority Stacking uh, live map. <laughs> I guess we'll call this uh, rapid visualization 
uh, meeting, and we'll see you on the next video, and we hope to see you on the inside of domainauthoritystacking.com and networkempire.com. Thank you.